Now, 40 years later, set in the beautiful Adirondack State Park, what once was created for mass destruction is now a beautiful resort getaway. Hello, and welcome to another edition of People Near Here. Today we're at Adirondack Air Park Estates in Saranac, New York, on the very northern edge of the Adirondack Mountains in far upstate New York. We've come here to introduce you to that fellow right there refueling his airplane in front of a house that he designed and built himself. Looks pretty ordinary, but it has a very special feature. Here's Bruce right here. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? How you doing, Derek? You getting all fueled up? You're going to take off today? Uh, yeah, in a few hours. We're heading back to Connecticut. Yeah, you live in Connecticut. Oh, yes. But you and your wife come up here to work on the estates and... Oh, yeah, we have a... Well, it's a 12-lot subdivision. We just yeah. got our permits approved for 12 lots and Great. we built a model home over there and just sold that and so you're working now we just finished this beautiful home but this one has a very special secret to it doesn't it it's probably one of the most unique <laughs> properties in the world but it just looks like a typical house on the surface okay well bruce francisco will you give us a tour of your place and sure let's let take us a in look on the secret yeah let's Great. come this way right lead on what got you interested in uh designing and building houses uh it was always a hobby even when i was 14 or 15 years old i was yeah doing some pretty interesting stuff uh, for my grandmother is always fixing things around the house. Oh, really? And, or did you just... <laughs> no, no. So this, you did this from scratch? Everything here is, uh, is we built, we did everything here from the drywall to the electrical to the design. No kidding. Yes. And my eye goes right to this interesting fireplace. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. And look at this counter, this uh, great kitchen counter over here. It looks almost like an altar. It's almost like it's a castle. It's like strong enough you can stand and jump in that thing. It's solid. And it's nice indirect lighting underneath here. Yeah, basically it's great for entertainment, this whole situation here. Yeah. We, we threw in this upstairs loft uh, just as an added little feature for like a little a desk area. And you got a deck that goes all the way around And the we have outside. a wraparound deck. There's actually 28 windows in this room. And, uh, and you have a, a half bath right here. Yeah. Let me show you my basement. I got a really cool basement. Okay, go that, ahead. That's what's going to make a difference. All right. I like it. This is nice. Now, this enters a whole nother world. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, we're walking down a set of stairs here. And uh, it's getting kind of echoey, too. Yeah, we go down a long way, don't we? It's not like your normal basement. And I'll tell you, at one point, this was another whole thing for another whole purpose. Now, uh, Derek, this whole situation you see right here at one time, was completely underwater for 30 years. Wait, it was underwater for 30 years? Yeah. Okay. Oh, as far as we got to do, you know what? Let me get the key. It's right over there. Okay, here we go. 2,000 pounds works pretty much the way it would have worked 30 years ago. A little and step up uh, there, Freddie. I guess we should shut the door behind us. Yeah. I guess. Okay, come here. Where are we? <laughs> well, we're actually right now only 20 feet below the Earth's surface. We are in a abandoned missile base built by the government during the Cold War in the early, late 50s, early 60s. It's an Atlas F silo, and they were abandoned. They, fi they filled them with water, and that, that was it. As this I said, this was all filled with water for 30 years. So this... Restoring the situation as you see it now was kind of like raising that Titanic and then restoring that back to its original condition. There was a lot of work involved to bring it to this level. So you live here? Uh, yeah, it's a home. Uh, we're about to enter the Launch Control Center, which is basically another home with another full kitchen, a few master bedroom suites, and okay. jacuzzi tubs, marble baths. So you've taken something that was a instrument of war and turned it into a nice comfortable cozy home huh? very con basically it's like your own secret palace yeah the reason we had to build in the upstairs is because the cement that went through the surface uh -huh. it would get cold and the difference between because it's always this is the coldest it gets in the hallway here yeah, it's like it's 60 degrees yeah. so it always created condensation uh -huh. so we had to build a home over the whole thing over the and top. integrate it into this so it's all one big complex now i see so anyhow this was all underwater 30 years this and you pumped the water out of here? Pumped the water out, cleaned it, my cousin and I. And then this. <laughs> now this is the Now door. this is all built in. Everything yeah. you see here is new. Yeah. And this is a door I can This understand. is a door that we put in. And as I said, it, it wasn't like this when we yeah. got it. 
This is the uh, upstairs of what they call the launch control center. This is where the crew actually lived, wow. not where they launched the missiles, but this whole room up here was strictly for living quarters. So this tower right here is yeah. actually a support tower. And actually, if you want to walk over here. We, this we, is concrete and we, it's and rebar, I'm sure. Oh, it's actually, this is it tough. All. It's reinforced with epoxy resin. It's yeah. stainless steel mesh. This stuff's tough. Yeah. It's made to How take How thick are the walls here? Uh, three feet. And then, actually, this escape hatch, we'll show you a little bit later, oh. was in a, <laughs> this used to be filled with sand. And if they ever needed to, they'd pull these levers and the sand would be released and they could climb out. The sand was like an insulation barrier right. in case there ever was a direct nuclear hit. Because this was bomb proof. I this mean, was, you uh, could hit this with a bomb, nuclear weapon. Theoretically, they, it could take pretty close to a direct nuclear hit. The crew would survive and still be able to launch a wow. missile. Wow, you've done a great job. Look at this kitchen. This is the kitchen. And I see windows. Is, can that be a window? <laughs> this Actually, that's, see the colors in there? Yeah. It's fiber optic lighting. We shut down the lights. They would kind of just give it a real neat backlighting throughout the room. Well, it's great because you're kind of claustrophobic, right? Yeah, well, a you, bit. you feel claustrophobic? No, not too bad. Huh? Not Actually, in here, uh, I oh, have my, uh, my friend Donnie. He's been working with me throughout the whole oh, project. Oh, look at this. Donnie's still working back here. We're just tying up the panel. We're actually finished. We're just tying up all the loose ends now. Just, it's ready, pretty much a turnkey situation. So you've built a home inside the silo, and you've done all the wiring, all the watering, all the... Uh, all the plumbing. We yeah. engineered the whole system. Yeah. It has... We have a furnace upstairs, but all the baseboard, we brought down, like, we have six zones for hot water baseboard really? throughout every situation. Really? Gee, nice, uh, nice dining room table here. Looks like the... Reminds me of the West Coast a little bit, you know? Straight up from Mexico. Mexico, yeah. Where, uh, where do you sleep? Well, we have the downstairs. Let's go check out the downstairs. Now, initially, the only way you could get to the downstairs was through that stairwell that we entered. We cut through the iron. I, I got to tell you, this whole interior was suspended with four huge shocks. Really? So if a bomb ever hit the whole floor, it would ride on the shock. Yeah. Now it's resting on the bottom. Obviously, we don't need the shocks. So we had to cut this into the iron to the downstairs. And carpeted it nice. The carpeting is oh, sure. important because it absorbs a lot of the sand. Well, you know, we and you painted this. This is look at this paint job here. This is great. Isn't that nice? It yeah, kind of almost gives it a marble yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah. And as we come down here, this is the lower level, and this is where the crew manned computers. This whole downstairs was computer systems for the, I guess we would call primitive guidance systems yeah. that they had back then. But then it was state of the art. Well, actually, well, this whole room would fill with computers back then would now be satisfied with a simple laptop. Yeah. You know? yeah. So anyhow, uh, th we, you know, this is like a closet that goes under stairs here. It's got closet space. Oh, yeah, this, this, this is right. interesting. The, the it's a very interesting framing situation. Yeah, look at the wood here. Leave this open. This is, this is the stairs <laughs> that we just came down. Exactly. And uh, you've done a great job. You and your guys have done a fabulous job. This is the main. Uh, this one is of the room. Uh, here's my wife. She's checking her email. Hi, Hi Kelly. How are you? I'm fine. How so you you're doing? you're plugged into the 21st century, even though you're sitting in a. Uh, Here she is, 40 feet below the Earth's surface, communicating yep. to other people around the country right that's now. That's great. That's right. That's 40 feet below the ground. That's fabulous. Uh, here's the uh, bathrooms. We we built everything in. Everything's all custom. You have a real interesting walk-in shower. If you look over there, you see like the lighting effects. See that? And, and it's that, That's actually daylight uh, spectrum light. So you, yeah. you almost have that feeling that something's coming through, and you don't have that feel that you're 40 feet below the Earth's surface. You nice. have tall ceilings in here, which get that effect too. Nice job. Really nice job. Look at the size of that shower. It's definitely different. Now, interesting with the vet, we always thought we'd have a moisture problem in here. Yeah. But we've gotten rid of it completely. We even have a fan that it sucks it out and, and draws it into the silo, which we'll see soon. Yeah. And uh, but we don't have a moisture problem. It's actually a little dry. Yeah. But we actually have a little humidifier if we if we sleep at night. But anyhow, I'll bet it gets really quiet, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, they're all they're all well, yeah. You sleep great. In do here. you? Yeah, great. I'll bet you do. And uh, this is the master bedroom suite. You have another bedroom? Yeah, oh, yeah. They're suites. Uh, basically, they all have their own little situations. I, oh there, my, look at this. There's a central sound system, and we have a, a video surveillance system, which look at this. It, this is the uh, master bedroom. The bath. Bathroom. 
That's the bedroom bath. Look at this. Isn't and this beautiful? Again, walk-in showers are all custom with all Jacuzzi. sorts of... Jacuzzi. Yeah, mar a lot of marble and a lot of interesting effects. Um, oh, same yeah. thing in there. It's a neat little shower. I don't yeah, know. check this shower out. Another big shower. You know, the, uh, the, the people that manned this during the Cold War would get a real kick out of this. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't they? I have a group of uh, people interested in coming in this May. Take a look at it. They yeah. were all Cold War advocates. This whole place is for sale. It's all for sale. You're going to sell the missile silo and all? And what they get is up to 85 acres of land. That's negotiable. In the heart of the Adirondacks. They get a, what is this, a rare 20th century collectible. Yes, you're right in the Adirondacks. Not far from Lake Placid. 20 right. minutes to skiing at uh, world-class skiing, Whiteface. Their private airport. They're you got your own private airstrip. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's the only one like it in the world. So it's, and it's done with quality all the way through. And that's what's a unique initiative. It is. You've done a marvelous job. This just looks, I mean, this looks like it's been here since Roman days. Really, really nice. And you're on your own water system here, right? We actually have four wells on the property. Yeah. And uh, they're all just there. And we, <laughs> we have as much water as we'd ever dreamed. And about. you have, uh, the electricity is con local electricity. We have 200 amp service. Yeah. You're not isolated, in other words. I mean, if, if you lose, if the rest of Saranac loses electricity during an ice storm, for example, you'll lose it too. We'll lose it too, but we right. have a backup generator system wired into the place. Perfect. So. Well, Anyhow, this is uh, the lower, this is the Step way you would in. normally have entered had we not cut the spiral staircase. Wait a minute, now explain that to me. Oh, because when we See, came you through look the up big here, glass doors. Exactly, this is the other option to come down, but uh -huh. that's how the crew used to come down. I see. When they came down. Look at these split too, I'm sure. So you're going to put the laundry room in here? Uh, this is the laundry room. Uh, yeah. Washer, dryer. Yeah. And uh, right here we have, if I lift this up, which I don't want to do right now, yeah. we have another tank. This was the sewer, but right. now what we did, we built a closed system. We built a tank inside of it, and this pumps into that iron pipe, goes up 30 feet, and shoots 100 feet out to an 1,800-gallon existing septic that the government built to handle 40 men. So, you know, it's, it's quite overkill. And um, That's it, fabulous. This is the base. This is your cellar, in a sense. Right. But then you might think that, that this is all there is, Yeah. and then we enter... The silo. There's more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a silo because there was a, there was a 15. What about a about a what? 15 uh, story missile. At one well, point. actually, the missile was 110 feet tall, and we have a tunnel that goes 70 feet through three more blast doors, and here's one of them right here. Can we see that? Sure. Okay. Let's do it. <sighs> Another door here. Now this we didn't we cleaned it, but we didn't clean it as thoroughly. You notice that the air is a little cooler in here? Yeah, this would make a great wine cellar. Oh, this incredible. You have 12,000 square feet of extra space down here to do whatever you want to. And but as far as we're concerned, this is our basement. <laughs> yeah. So let me and turn on is, the main this lights. This is what it all looked like upstairs before you guys came in. Exactly. Room. Well, this is a little cleaner. It's been cleaned up. I can't tell you, this was pretty rough. Yeah. This was Plus really rough. Plus it was underwater. Yeah, this is pretty clean but what we're going to see now you get a good taste of going it. Going through another blast door we just went through one there there's another one here yeah there's three more blast doors another blast door here and it's going to take a little while for these lights to warm up because they're high pressure sodium oh you have I see this is come on over here in the light and let's Okay. This what, is great. This what is you have here, we're in a situation where it's 50 foot diameter. You basically have a steel skyscraper in place here. Underground. Three quarters of these sites that exist today, which are a lot of them are filled with water, mm -hmm. don't have the steel. You'd walk out here to the end, mm -hmm. and it would just be a big hole that's 50 feet wide, goes down to 180 feet. Mm -hmm. So this why is, does this This is a real have? commodity to have the steel on it. Why does this? Now, of course, they spent 18 million. And they would blast a hole in the ground first, a big hole, and then build this in the hole. Right. You could yeah. even, for the cost eighteen million to build it back then, you couldn't even uh, dig the hole for that today. Can we go over here? Sure. It's starting to get brighter in here. So. Can you see this, Freddie? You're Can safe. You light in here. Oh my goodness! Wait a minute. The, Hang white, on. the light's going to get brighter and brighter. Hang on a second. I'm a little. Uh, I'm afraid of heights, so uh, I'm just going to take one real quick peek here. Oh my gosh! It goes down it's about a hundred feet. Uh, hundred feet from where we are. If you look up, we could actually go up the stairs if you like, and you could real, get a good real shot of the blast doors. And 
So the blast doors are right up there where those bright lights are. Uh, well, those aren't the blast. Yeah, that's the doors. The of that's course. the surface. Right. That's the earth. I mean, that's the surface. Right. And in this big, big room here sat an Atlas missile. Yes, exactly. And this was an elevator. See, the government came in. They took the elevator. Yeah, out. there was an elevator over here, and they removed that. And then look over there. You see this thing right here? Like a gantry that, crane. That, that's like something. a little workstation. You can see where it went yeah. around the missile over there. So they could work on them. And look at the spring system. Wait a minute. You look Let's walk over there so Freddie can see it, because we're a long ways away. OK. This is absolutely amazing. It's pretty interesting that they've actually did something like this. And this is the spring system here, Bruce? Is well, if you look over here, you see this, this is a mount. There's four mounts. The concrete is actually eight foot thick for the first 60 feet, I believe. Wow. And this mount is mounted into it. Uh -huh. And you see those two poles hanging down? Yeah. If you look across, let's step over here a little bit, yeah. uh, you'll see the shock system. Oh, yeah, big coils. And now those extend down about 70 feet. Yeah. And this whole steel skyscraper is actually suspended by this shock system so we're hanging you wouldn't be able to jump and feel it move I'm sure <laughs> but but we're suspended inside a big pool. right if the earth ever moved this thing's just gonna hang on its shocks so if you don't like earthquakes this is a great place to be yeah you probably won't feel it there's huh? it's interesting because uh, I have some interested buyers on this thing already I don't know who's gonna actually follow through yeah. but we could salvage this thing if uh -huh. they had the money so yeah. that, that's an option if they want us to do the work if someone buys it sure. we could turn this into seven uh, apartments, you know, yes. it could be for their friends. Right. It's just a unique getaway. Right. But uh, the, the possibilities are limited. I mean, there's a possibility of taking off one of those blast doors. Yeah. It's, it's two doors, of course, that would open up. Put a big but, skylight or something? Right, just put like one foot thick skylight here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'd have an interesting atrium effect down here. You would have a wonderful atrium. Heat it up a little bit, you could grow, you could grow you could have trees in here. <laughs> you, could, so you could have a really unique situation here. And if you think on these different levels here, each apartment would open up to the, end, the center area. Yeah. So it, it has the potential. Yeah, it has a lot of great potential. It's, it's here. It's, uh, it's a basic. It's in place. Uh, well, that's it. That's all the time we have for this edition of People Near Here from a very interesting home, you'll have to admit, right in the heart of the Adirondack Mountains. On behalf of videographer Paul Frederick, I'm Derek Bearden saying thanks for watching. And we hope that you'll tune in again next time when we'll introduce you to some more interesting people near here.